Hello, Moral, and welcome to Oral Gets Live. And with me, I have the leader of Hope Party. He is also a member of the Territorial Council of St. Martin, Mr. Jules Chabel. How are you doing, sir? Hi, Owen Gibbs. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, always a pleasure to come here. Uh, um, it's unbelievable, but time goes so fast. Uh, uh, it's almost a year yeah. already. <laughs> it's was, very close to a year. I know, I was checking it and I said, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, to me it was like yesterday, last yeah. week, you know. So thank you one more time for inviting me here. Always You're a welcome. pleasure to be with you. So how are things going with you? Well, uh, I'm here uh, with this new administration, let's say for the past year and a half. Mm. Uh, it, it's my 11th, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, 11th year uh, in the council mm. since we are in uh, our new con polit political configuration, our new status, Article 74. Uh, it's, it's my 11th year in the council. Mm. So um, this is the fifth president in 11 years that I'm working with, uh, always in opposition. Mm. So uh, this is quite an interesting experience now with this new president, this new administration. So is it much different than the others? In many ways, uh -huh. positive. There's some positivity mm. and Lately now, uh, some of the positivity is becoming negativity. But uh, yeah, it's mm. quite different. And uh, it's um, challenging for me. Why? Because uh, the current president, Mr. Louis Massenton of the Collectivity, uh, we have worked for many years together. Uh, we have, even though we have, we are leaders of different parties, but we share the same political vision for St. Martin. Uh, when it comes to social issues, mm -hmm. uh, we found ourselves uh, in the same organization, socially speaking, defending the people, whether it's protests in the streets, yeah. whether it's uh, having to uh, organize delegations to go sit and negotiate with the state, the prefer. Yeah. Uh, we would be sitting together doing that together. So we have a history of fighting for the people together with others also that are not even in politics, but that's a history. So uh, being elected in opposition with somebody like that that is heading the majority, uh, it is a kind of delicate position. Mm. I find myself in a delicate situation because you have to denounce what's wrong or what you feel is not good for the country. At the same time, you're supportive to this person that you have worked with, that you actually uh, been in a, yeah, uh, we, we've been in an alliance in the past, the past administration together in opposition. We had a lot an alliance, mm -hmm. so we were, so, and, and we tried to come together at, before election, this, uh, uh, what you call uh, rassemblement, which is coming together of different politicians uh, that went to elections in the past. We have tried to do that together. It didn't work, but I'm just saying that we have a history of working together. So I try my best to continue to do that even though I'm in opposition and it's becoming more and more difficult because there are more and more things that I disagree with. Uh, I agree with a lot of things but now and I, w I was disagreeing I didn't have much things to disagree with but now lately I happen to have to disagree with a lot of things and that's why it's becoming a little delicate for me now. Well you know you guys were in the trenches together yeah. for many, many years. Many years. And it's quite interesting because um, President Mussington started off as a social activist. Yeah. Slowly, slowly, mm -hmm. it took him, what, 30 years before he became president? 38, 37, 38 years. That's yeah. a long time. It's a long time. No. A long time. So yeah. it, it tells you something about mm -hmm. um, the nature of politics, too. Times change and people change. Yeah. 
Absolutely, and yeah. determination too, you know. Yeah. Uh, determination and also being able to be convincing. And it, for some people, they've got, they'll be very lucky to happen one time. Yeah. But most of the time, it takes you years, uh, sometimes generations, for, mm. you to, for the people to accept you yeah. as, as their leader. That's quite interesting because every day I always had you and him, yeah. but he's president now, so we're too small for him. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, you, you, I'm learning something, yeah. and I'm surprised to hear that because uh, I don't see him doing that. Mm. To me, he has more wisdom than that, and he's, the way I see him, yeah. what I know of him, uh, I don't see him doing that. So is it that uh, he's too busy? Is it that uh, he'll get back to you? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I would wish that he could continue because he does it, that is one of his strong points. I have to give him that. That is what is making him very popular, is that he tries his best to stay close to the population by coming to programs like this, this one, mm -hmm. uh, going to parties uh, and talking about when there's a fet, you see him among the people uh, and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, <laughs> It's well, kind of strange. Time will tell. I've been in this business yeah. for over 40 years, and people change. Yeah. There's people something do, about power, unfortunately. political power. Once they get there, yeah. something happens. Yeah. And it's very rare that they remain the same person. Yeah. Well, what you just said there, Oral, I'm witness, witnessing this now, that now. Mm. I'm seeing a change, and I wonder, is it the power that has gone to their heads? Because... I know the persons, not only Mr. Mossington, but I know Mr. Richardson Allen well. And I'm saying that lately there are certain decisions, certain direction they want to take the country into. And I'm saying, but these are not the guys that I know. Are these the same guys that I work with, knowing the philosophy that they have as far as when it comes to St. Martin for its people? And Yet, they're saying it, but their actions now make me wonder, are these the same guys? So, you're so right. Is it the fact that you sit there and you feel that power and then you become someone else? Yeah. You have to wonder. Well, in case if you're just joining us, uh, this is Oral Gibbs Live. My guest is uh, leader of whole party, uh, territorial council member, Mr. Shawbill. He holds two seats in the territorial council of St. Martin. And you know, it is quite interesting because um, I see so much similarity. I, I spoke with you about this the last time. Yeah. Between this, both sides, we're like the same. But we, we've been the same <laughs> for years. Yeah. But now, uh, since uh, I think the time, uh, there came a time when they told us uh, quite a few years ago, probably 80s, I think it happened in the early 80s, late 70s when we began to hear Saint Martin and Saint Martin, mm -hmm. from there all, it started to go downhill. Oh, over there's a different country. That's Holland, over here's France. And the new generations, they start to brainwash them with that. And we begin to look at each other as foreigners. So we're not brother, brothers and sisters anymore. We forget that we have the same families, the same ties. Uh, this one people, one country, one people, it's now in jeopardy because of that concept. Over there is foreign, same thing, telling our brothers and sisters over here, over there is a French side, it's French, it's France. That's what's, that's what's creating the problem. It's unfortunate because I, I remember um, a few years ago when I had you here in the program also, yeah. we spoke about you being a businessman on both sides. Of course. And you For many years. have very good experience with both sides. Many years. So yeah. I guess you can... Experience and family on <laughs> both sides. <laughs> right. <laughs> but family on both sides, you know. And, and uh, the business part is so unique, though. You, you're yeah. one of the few um, politicians I know on the French mm -hmm. side that have... Mm -hmm. had business and operate on both sides. On both sides, and uh, friends on both sides, and I see us as one people. And your family on both sides? You both said. sides, yeah. both sides. I have a lot of popular persons that are my cousins over here. I have a lot of family under this. this. I have family in Curacao, Aruba. I have family in Guadeloupe, mm -hmm. 
also. But I'm saying that when it comes to St. Martin, yeah. uh, there are many, many uh, St. Martiners in my situation, some living over here on mm -hmm. the south side, but got family over there. And we, we used to be this one people. We only see it and, and acknowledge it now once a year. 11th yeah. of November, you see it, the hugging, the kissing, mm. the champagne, that's when we remind ourselves the next morning, forget it, we turn our backs to each other and we go our separate ways. Uh, there was a time it was permanent in Claude Watty days and uh, Mr. Claude Watty days and Mr. Dr. Petit days. Mm. The two leaders, actually that's where that St. Martin Day came from. It's, it was their decision, a joint decision together because right. they became friends and they used to run both sides at, as one country. Uh, they would consult each other on the decisions to take and so. And that's, it, we the people, we felt that because there was no difference between mm. French and Dutch and things. Uh, now, it's so complicated. Try getting a, a job, someone from the su southern side, try getting a job on the northern side or vice versa. Mm. It's complicated, even doing business. Uh. It wasn't so before. So it all came from that. Now, the state of France has a huge role on the French side to keep it that way and to make it even worse. And I would say that Holland is not innocent on the southern side with that is concerned too. Of course, mm. they speak to each other. Right. So they know what they're doing. We not understand what they're doing, but they have a plan. You know, um, it's quite interesting what you said. In, in the days of Claude and, and Petit, uh, if you voted for Claude, you also voted for Petty. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I could tell because my <laughs> father was like was. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, overall, you, you have to uh, admit too that in those days, mm -hmm. Uh, on both sides, the populations were much smaller, well, yeah. but we were happier. We were happier people. Yeah. And to me, the people, uh, there was no money problem. There was a lot of money flowing in the 70s. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, there was, you could feel that there was money. There was no misery. I haven't seen anyone in Margot begging anybody for money, as we are seeing today, you know. Uh, but yet, it was a much smaller population. Mm -hmm. But today now, a uh, huge population, uh, both sides almost not talking to each other, you know, for whatever reason, not communicating the way they should or the, the way they used to, and uh, uh, poverty. Oh, but that, that's what, poverty. that's really bad. Yeah. yeah. On both sides, friend side is less seen because the state is pumping a lot of money in mm. hands. Yeah. But I know on the southern side, on the southern side, it's not the same system, so that doesn't exist. So it, it is more seen. But even though on the northern side, there's a lot of money coming from the state to, to so said help, but there's still a lot of poverty that is not seen because a lot of people not qualified to receive that money. Does it surprise uh, you where we are today in terms of poverty? Um, no, because what happened with the influx of outside mm -hmm. population, it happened too fast in a, in a short time. Uh, there was a time this defiscalization, uh, uh, defiscalization, right. yeah, on the French side was ramping. So they encouraged a lot of people to come to this island mm -hmm. because they wanted people to do this to to do a uh, mason, do this, they didn't have enough of that. So they brought in a lot of people. But that, that only lasted for a short time. And today, those people are there, they're not working, they made children, you have to find schools for those children, they have to build new schools, build new schools, and et cetera, et cetera. So eventually, we knew where we were heading. And what we're seeing today is the result, at least on the northern side, the explanation is that. No, um, I understand you all had a council meeting yesterday. Yeah. And um, there was an interesting proposal at that council meeting mm -hmm. regarding mm -hmm. the airline. Yeah. Um, there are two airlines that are as assuring the lines between uh, the line Guadeloupe-St. Martin, St. Martin-Guadeloupe, mm -hmm. It's Air, Air Caribe 
in Air Antilles. And of course, they also go as far as Guyana, French Guyana. So they go to Martinique, French Guyana. And one of them, which is Air Antilles, uh, sometime early August, declared bankrupt. Uh, they went in front of the judge, and the judge agreed well, to give them, uh, let's say if we compare it to the American system, Chapter 11, so they're protected from the debtors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now they're liquidating that company, they're dismantling it. And somebody or some people advise the, our president and his team and the majority that this would be an opportunity for them to go and not take over the entire airline, but since they are dismantling it, mm. to take over what they, they can cherry pick, what they want, and make an offer for those things. So they're saying, we're not taking over the debts, so we're going to take over a few planes, some employees, uh, all those buildings in Guadeloupe, the the hangers, the this, the that, a certain amount of things. So they make an they made an offer to the court in Guadeloupe, but they said, but we need some kind of entity to carry that. And so the collectivity, uh, you heard of Semsama, right, right. Semsama is a company that is was created with uh, part public funds taxpayers' money, and part private funds. You call it a societal economy mix, uh, a company that has mixed funds, public fu and, and private. They have decided, okay, to carry this project, let's create a new company like that. The law and the French system is when you create a company like that, the government must have minimum 51% of the shares. They decide we're going to take 60%. You got a minimum of 51, a maximum of 85. They chose 60. And they said, you know what? We need a strong partner, and we're going to give that partner 40%. They choose the company that is running the airport on the French side. That's a Canadian company? Uh, it used to be. Uh -huh that sold their shares to a French company. Okay. But that company has a contract with the same government that is going in business with them. A contract mm -hmm. of which they haven't, they haven't assumed quite a bit of, of, of things that they engage themselves to do, but they have never done them. So there, were, there was a time where they were in court. Uh, there's a possibility that they would have to fight something in court again. So they're, they're fighting, but yet they chose that company <laughs> that is going to, offer, to go in bed when to give them 40%. Mm. So from the beginning, we have a problem. Um, on top of that, oh well, what they decide to take, they are in their offer to the court. They said they're going to take 80 uh, employees. They have taken 120. They have taken five aircrafts of which two, uh, what you call the ATR-72, that can't take off from Grand Cars full. Right. They're supposed to be 72 for 72 passengers from Grand Cars because the length of the airway, the, the runway, runway, sorry, the runway, they can only take off with 50. So you're losing 22 seats already. Um, the airline went down mainly because of the strikes in Guadeloupe. Guadeloupe, they, they like to strike. And if you take in 120 employees that are the strikers, the same strikers that were along that airline, and you're taking them on, <laughs> um, then you would have about minimum six months that when you, let's say the court say, okay, you can have that. Minimum six months to a year that you can't fly, waiting for your license to be able to fly. In the meantime, we learned that when you take this deal, you're inheriting a loan of 21 million. So we taxpayers, we're going to owe the banks 21 million that you have to pay back, uh, 500,000 per month. During that six months or that one year, you still have to be paying that. So, so it's, it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> it's, listen, it's like taking the taxpayers' money and, and, and going to a casino with it. The risk is so huge. 
you don't gamble the taxpayers' money. So of course I couldn't go for that. And I explained them, this is not a good deal. Don't do that. And I still went with it. Why? Because so the council some, voted on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the majority. But the opposition don't always be united because uh, I think someone from the, Mr. Richardson said once, uh, we have the minority mm -hmm. in the opposition. We have the opposition because they realize, I explained at the beginning of this program, we didn't go there, uh, my, uh, my partner and myself, our faction then, the Generation Hope Party, didn't go there to oppose Mr. Mustenton for the reason that I explained. Right. But we told him when it's wrong, we're going to tell you it's wrong. And this here, they're dead wrong. You cannot do that. It was done yesterday. The court has to give its dis decision today, the 21st of, uh, of September. And, and, and we'll see. There are some other companies, uh, I think one from Guyana, a few from Guadeloupe, that are also bidding for other things. There's one that wants to take over the entire route, the way it used to be, including Guyana. So we'll see what's going to happen. But if for some reason we win the bid that, for which we are bidding, for the things, if we get the things that we are bidding for, it's going to be catastrophic. The kind of money you have to dish out then, they're saying that while they're waiting this six months period, minimum, it could go up to a year, mm. they're going to go into what you call a wet lease, mean to say uh, they're signing a contract, they give us the name of the company with a company in France that is going to lease them two aircraft. You have to pay a minimum of 100,000 euros per plane to get them here and to one each, mm. so that's 200,000 to get them, 200,000 to send them back, that's 400,000 off the bat. They're going to send their pilots, at least minimum of 10 pilots. The stewardess says they're going to send them, the, the crew, the maintenance crew. And we have to pay to keep them, and uh, to keep them, the lodging. We have to pay to feed them, everything, for whatever time. And then, of course, they're charging us per hour, a minimum amount of hours per plane. And when you calculate that, those things, there's no way you can make money. Wow. You, you, so, so that's what we saw there yesterday in the council. And I find it to be crazy. I kind of explain, explain, demonstrate it. And then there's a situation. And that, from the very beginning, I told them, OK, if you're going to do it, Local investors, you said you're going to put in local investors because this company is a foreign company, the company that is running the airport that has the 40%. Right. I asked them how much of that 40% that this company is willing to release to our local investors since you want, you said you're going to bring in local investors. They couldn't answer. The collectivity, as I said, a minimum of 51% legally. So they can release 9% out right. of the 60. So we know you can release the 9%, but what about them? There was no answer, right? But yesterday, in the documents, we learned that once they would, let's say they, they're lucky enough to win, this company that has the 40%, the company that is running the airport, will release a certain amount of shares to another company. And when we ask who owns that company, is a director of that same company, that pharma company, and they're going to share, uh, split the shares, but they can't tell us what percentage is going to the local investors up to today. I have a problem with that. Wow, I'm 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 really surprised that to hear those things. Yeah, because um, are you the only business person um, in the council? Uh, I would say no. There's another one. It's two of us, Michel Pertiz uh, yeah. is a businessman. And Alan Richardson, to a certain extent, yeah, could is be it, three max. Yeah, he's an accountant, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. Sorry? Alan is an accountant? Yeah, but he's also, yeah, I think he's also uh, in business here and there. You know, um, I don't know much about the airline business, but mm -hmm. uh, seeing those two airlines flying between St. Martin and Guadalupe Martinique over the years, yeah. I always wonder how, how they could make it because <laughs> the, the amount of flights they did per They're day. They're struggling, and yeah. that's why this one went down, but the other one's struggling. Mm. 
even though I'm sure even though it's they're by themselves today, they're still struggling. You take, for instance, a company like Liat. How many times Liat failed? Yet the, the market was only them. Yeah. And they still fail. Got back up, fail again. An airline, the airline business is not easy. You don't take taxpayers' money and go. Knowing from the beginning that you're going in a wall and you're still going. It tells me something. It tells me that they give them that idea, but for what I saw <clears throat> for the past days, certain changes, they came and changed this and changed that. And I realized it's not the president that's making the changes. And some of them he was not even aware of. And they made the changes and submitted, submitted them to us. And they voted in <clears throat> it? And the whole council voted? Some of them without wow. reading. <clears throat> wow, wow. Last minute mm -hmm. change yesterday in the council. They give us 10 minutes to read the changes. Mm -hmm. I look at them to see who was reading. They didn't read. They went outside. They went to eat. They drink. Sounds familiar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we know we're going to vote for it anyway, so we don't want yeah. to go. It's the people's business. You taking the mm -hmm. man people on a ride. And let's try to understand so you can say, no, we can't accept this. No. So the opposition they did, was not, unanimous? They did not. We were united on that, yeah. uh, against it. And, wow. and, and uh, it was nothing political, just common sense, business sense, telling you, hey, guys, this can't fly. Mm. This won't fly. We're going to fall flat. Before you, even we begin, we fail. And, and they're not seeing that. I want to go back because it's good that if you could explain some for my audience here. Yeah. You mentioned Samsima. Yeah. Samsima made this money in real estate development, right? Mostly on the, on, it started in St. Martin as a local it company. It started as a small company in St. Martin, but now it's all over the huge. French and yeah. French territories. It's in France, Martinique, Guyana, Guadeloupe. They have uh, many, many buildings, apartment buildings in Guadeloupe. That's where they make most of their money now. Then Martinique, then Goya, then mm. Paris. They're all over. So it's a brainchild of St. Martin. It started it is, right here. It is. You now the yeah. French government owns 51%. The, well, the local government. Local go yeah. In those days, it was a commune. Right. In Albert Fleming, the, uh, Albert Fleming, Louis Constant, I forgot. One of those two. Yeah. But it was the mayor. And uh, they brought in local investors from the beginning, mm -hmm. from the foundation, which I'm telling, I was telling the president, I say, if you're going to bring in local investors, yeah. let's bring them in from now. You recall who those local you investors were? You're promising them, yeah. but yet, we seen that the way the shares are, are split mm -hmm. and the way they plan to do it, because they told us after, if we get a bit, this yeah. is what we're going to do. And we realize that they, this company is going to share it with a sister company. And, those, and then those, those are, are the right. people that are in control, really. Wow. Those are the people that are in control. But then Sensima goes from real estate now to the airline business, in a way. Uh, since I'm right, set them a new company. So, you, you mentioned they set up a new company. No, no, since I'm out? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I mentioned since I'm out just to oh. explain the type of company. Okay, I'm glad you explained it. It's a I company wanted... like since oh, I'm out. Okay, okay. So this is the second company on the French side that is created that was created like that. Okay. Like a since I'm out type. I thank you for that clarification. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah okay. <laughs> so um, it's quite interesting because, you know, it seems like the people of French are very happy and contented. Yes, for now, uh, I have to admit that the president, uh, Mossenton, I said from the beginning uh, of his mandate, and, and the reason I give here uh, earlier, uh, I have no problem. We have worked together. I, I was happy that he got elected, and to see uh, people like uh, Franz Gomes, uh, Alan Richardson, and uh, uh, with him. Mm. Because these are the people I identify with, politically speaking. I have never fought, politically speaking, Mr. Mossenton. Hope Party, Generation Hope in, in 2022, when the election was, we have never really fought each other. Okay, because at the time we were fighting Mr. Gibbs mm. together. So today, we, not, we shouldn't be fighting each other. And that's even I'm in opposition, the idea is not to fight him. So I have to admit that, yes, the people feel more relaxed. They feel happier. Why? Because he's closer to them than the former president. He goes on the radio, explain a lot of stuff, uh, ex what he wants to explain. Like, you see what I just explained? Yeah. He wouldn't go and do that. Really? But No. He would tell them, listen, uh, we, this what we, the details like that. No, mm -hmm. because he knows what's going to be the reaction. 
who wants to hear this? So he's not going to say that, at least how I say it. He knows what the people want to hear. Yeah, yeah, but he's doing the right things mm -hmm. for the people. Yeah. Facebook, always present, every move. Uh, when the 14th of July, 11th of November, uh, gang cars fed, Senegong fed, big party, fireworks, uh, the place is clean. But it takes more than that when you're governing. You have to perform. You have to execute projects. You have to, you know, things that you promised in your campaign, you have to come up with. Uh, things that were destroyed by Oma six years ago, uh, today still down, the stadiums, the cultural centers. Uh, when we look at a budget, we don't see anything for those things. Uh, so those things catch up with you after a while. Right. So yes, up to a certain time, and I think that time has reached for what I'm seeing. There's some scandals uh, that are over there now in his cabinet. Such as? I think the directress of, oh. cabin, of his cabinet yesterday had to resign. Well, not yet resigned, but she was asked to stay home for four months because of a scandal. I'm not going to give the details mm -hmm. here. Uh, it's all there on the friend's side. I let it play out, but there's, there are different scandals. And uh, so I'm saying, okay, now that honeymoon period, there's always a honeymoon period between a new government had just gone in the population. And if, in his case, this Mr. Mustenton, as I said, he, he has the skills to know how to be close and how to hug people. And think it's not everybody that can do that. Uh, go down on the market, hug people, kiss them, be on Facebook, and things like that. But after a while, you begin to make mistakes. You don't keep your promises. You don't those things catch up with you. So he has to be very careful from now on. Okay. In case you just joined us, I'm Oral. This Oral gives a lot, my guess is uh, Mr. Chauvin. Mr. Chauvin is leader of the whole party. They hold two seats in the Territorial Council of St. Martin. And he's my guest here on the Oral Gibbs Live on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. When we come back, we'll continue right here on Oral Gibbs Live. Please do this. Hey, don't guess about your insurance. Be sure that you're covered. Like with your car. <sighs> like your home. Be sure to be covered in case of a fire, flood, hurricane, or some other natural disaster. And travel insurance. Because you never know what could happen when you're on vacation. You could lose your passport, your luggage, or have an accident. So be sure that you're covered. Insure yourself fast and easy with Be Sure from the Wynwood Islands Bank Limited. Visit your preferred WIB branch, WIB Insurance Services, or BeSureStMartin.com. Get your Be Sure insurance at the Wynwood Islands Bank, your partners in progress. For real? Somebody came in here and steal my curtains? Well, it's a good thing I'm insured with Be Sure. Because even the contents of my apartment are covered. Don't play guessing games with your insurance. Be sure. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. You're watching uh, Oral Gibbs Live. I'm here with uh, Councilman, it's a Councilman, right? Territorial yes, Council yes, member, uh, Council. leader of the whole party, Mr. Charville, and we're here speaking with him, and it's quite interesting. We are both sides, brothers and sisters here in St. Martin, but things don't look so nice these days, you know. And when I listen to you, uh, Mr. Charville, I, I see so much similarity in, yeah. in, in, in the way uh, both sides are being governed today and all the problems. With, both sides have. Yeah. People are saying that now. When they would talk, they'd say, but you know, on the southern side, it's not better, you know, because this going on and that going on. Well, if that is true, then I would say it's a pity. And it's still time for both sides, both leadership, to pull up their socks. It's still time. So, yeah. yeah. So after the Territorial Council meeting yesterday, were there any other uh, issues that you, you had to deal with that was important? Well, the thing is, they, uh, the president kept uh, that meeting with just that one point. Why? Because of today. So uh, yesterday was the 28th. The court has to decide the 21st. Okay. So let's do this quick. Because they had up to the 18th, two days before the meeting, mm -hmm. to put in their final offer, their refined offer. They put in a few, uh, a first um, offer a week before. And the judge gave them up to the 18 to refine it mm -hmm. if they wish. 
they have done that, I think the 18th by midnight. And then they came to the council yesterday so we can create this company in a rush. And it was really in a rush. Mm -hmm. They didn't want us to say much. Don't ask. You could ask questions, but don't. You can't give your opinion. Just ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. It's like yeah. uh, we don't want the population to understand too much. I'm just saying they're not saying that we understood that. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the things that I'm saying here, uh, the leadership yeah. will not say. Mm -hmm. They don't want the people to know uh, the details of mm -hmm. the risk. But uh, the, the risk is huge. I'm smiling. Yeah. You know why I'm smiling? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say for the first time, and the president of France and Martin can come out and say it's not true. Many, many years ago, okay. I, was I was invited to a radio interview on the French side. Okay. That's where um, that station for um, Kuchi is right now. Yeah. The yeah. I was there, and Mayor Fleming was there, and also Mustington was there. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was quite interesting because they wanted me to ask the mayor about something. I remember asking Mayor Albert Fleming, Mayor, if you had to start today, would it be easier for you? He said, no. He said, when he started in his days, uh -huh. it was a lot easier. He said, he would not have made it today in St. Martin. Okay. But the point now, I wanted to come up with independence. Mm -hmm. And most of them said, no, no, we can't talk about that. No, we can talk about next time. I never forgot that. I never, never forgot that. Okay. And so what I'm saying is um, <clears throat> I wonder mm -hmm. where he is today and, and, and why he wanted to avoid even talking about that well, at the well, time. Well, well uh, I, I, there's a detail, very important detail I have to give. Eh? Mm. He was not there yesterday. He wasn't in the council? The president was not there yesterday. He's on the island, though? The president left uh, last week, Saturday. He's in France. So Mr. Alan Richardson is who chaired okay. the meeting. However, however, the policy is the same. So Mr. Alan Richardson uh, was the one telling us, mm. uh, okay, uh, you, no, 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 uh, if you have a question, ask your question. To, you know, uh, when you see you want to explain, no, 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 ask your question. But it's on, it's on Facebook. The video is public for everybody to see. Everybody was surprised that that was the attitude. But uh, uh, Mr. Mustenton was, would have done the same because when he presides, he, he doesn't do it like that, but he gives you, say, okay, you got two more minutes, and they want to rush you, and it's always a rush. And a, a meeting like yesterday with one point, Hey, let's hear what we have to say. Uh, uh, no, it's like, no, uh, we have to go, we have to, okay, we're going to vote on it now. It's like, but no, wait, wait we ain't say nothing yet, you know. Uh, yeah, so it was like that. But it is, it's, it's the, I would say the team, the, 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 that mandate yesterday, mm. that's how they decided to carry on that meeting. And so in fact, uh, the collectivity of St. Martin wants to get into the airline business. Well, I don't, I'm not that, sure, I'm not sure that uh, that's what they wanted. The collectivity wasn't thinking about that. Some people mm. told them, this would be a good thing to do. Let's do this thing. And this is how we can do it. As I said, I saw in a certain meeting, and this can give you an example of why I know the collectivity not in control, and is there the people that are behind this? For whatever reason, we'd find out mm. in the future, maybe. Um, we, they give us a, a certain amount of documents. Hours before we went in that meeting, whereas we had to get them days before, but they said they're afraid that some of us leak the information so the competitors can get the information since they had 18 midnight. Wow. So even though we are elected, they don't trust us. Good. So we got these documents. While we're in that meeting, Mm. Once someone exposed something where we saw that this company that is getting the 40% is going to give 49% to up their shares to another company and the name was mentioned. So we said, wait a minute. So how come you're not, we asked you about the local investors. You can't tell us what percentage of that for, but 
yet we're seeing that this company is going to get 49%. You know what happened? Minutes after, they came with a modified document that changed that because the question was asked. Told us that we have to give them back that, that document, and here's a new one. That never happened before. Or well, when you're in a meeting, yeah, it happened yesterday. They say, listen, a report, report uh, that you have, uh, we modify it, here's a new one. But they're not supposing they didn't say, give us back the old one. They so didn't want that information to be known by the public that forced us to give them back the document and say, here's a new one. What do you have to hide? The vice president was sitting there. He didn't even know that that change happened. Okay? Is he discover the change with us? And he's the one in charge because the president ain't here. So you tell me, you tell me who's running the show. Okay? Under the president, and in this case, the vice president, because he's replacing the president now. He is the president now. He was supposed to tell these people, okay, go make this change and bring it back. They made a change, and he was sitting there. At no time I saw him, whether by phone or the change came in, and a huge change. Who's in control? You tell me. And as you said earlier, that the, the 60% is owned by the collectivity, right? Mm -hmm. And you said that normally it's 51%, so they can take the other nine and give that to a local investors. No, investor. let's say no, not normally. By law, mm -hmm. uh, it could be the state too. The state mm -hmm. of France got many companies like that where they are the main shareholders. So when it's the state, a government, whether local or state, the minimum you can have is 51%. Okay. So you have to remain, but the maximum is 85. So you got to choose between okay. 51 and 85. That's why they choose 60. They choose 60 because they knew, and that's what they, they refused to tell us mm -hmm. and the population. Listen, we took 60 because the maximum you locals are going to get is 9. They don't want to say that because that 40 is locking in, and they don't want to say it either. They don't want to admit that that 40 is locking in. I, hear, I heard in a meeting yeah. with the investors, because they, they call the investors in a meeting, and when the investors were leaving, a question was asked, because they were leaving without knowing the cost of a share, what percentage they can get, nothing. So they were leaving, and the question was asked, say, wait a minute, so what percentage out of 100%? Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that you can give out your collectivity. The maximum is nine, which I just explained. But the 40%, how much are they willing to release? They couldn't answer. So one of the investors said, why don't you take 80, your collectivity? At least we guaranteed that we can get at least 29. 29% is there for us together. As they said, no, no, no. That company will not accept which is right. the 40%, mm. the, the company that owns it for, will not accept it. Doesn't it tell you that it's locked in? But say it, explain it. They don't want to. It's locked in, why? Because they want to share that 40% with the next company of theirs. And that is, it is written. Yesterday we discovered that what it changed mm. when I told you they changed the document, they modified it to take out the 49%. And putting on the name of a next company, wow. different than the one that was there. All that happened yesterday. So this kind of uh, dealing and hiding, and it tells you that hmm, this thing doesn't smell too good. Something is behind it. And that's why I said collectivity, that's not their idea. They're not in charge of anything. And they even went as far as putting in a document that the manager of this company, not the president, will have to reside in Guadeloupe. In Guadeloupe? Yet, Why? yet, yet oh. that's, they're saying, oh, we're taking it for our, it's going to be a St. Martin company. And it said in the document, the manager will have to reside in Guadeloupe. Wow. All those things are written, not said, written. We read those things there. That's part of the agreement, basically. Yeah. 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 Wow. You know, I thought that the government now will be working fully in the interest of the people of uh, the island, for instance. That's the sad thing, because the, what they're doing there, what they have done yesterday, 
I could, listen, it doesn't matter how I'm supporting you. And then know that most of the time I say yes, I vote yes, because it makes sense. This is for St. Martin. But yesterday, how could I live with myself if I did tell him, okay, let's do that? No, you can't do that. It's tax. People, people work hard to pay these taxes, and you're going to gamble their money like that? And for others to profit. Why? Because there are some positions in there, administratively speaking, that people are going to make a lot of money just in salaries. Okay? Even the administrators that are going to put in, they're going to be paid. They, they nominated administratory. Uh, the uh, bylaws say, uh, say that uh, uh, there will be five administrators, two from this company that has a 40%, three from the collectivity. So the collectivity nominate, nominated its three yesterday. Uh, one of them can become the president. That person will be paid a lot of money. They're all locals, the three? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they're from the council. Oh, okay. Yeah, as I said, the sixty percent you got three, you got rights to three. The forty percent you got rights to two, so that's the five. But those five there, uh, they will get, they'll get paid. Maybe not a lot of money, but the president gets paid a lot of money. The director, huge amount of money, and uh, the director is not going to be one of us. I can guarantee you that. So these people, they see their benefit. And, and, and that's why they're pushing the collectivity to do this thing. And the idea, the basic idea, did not come from the president. He said, oh, that could be a good idea. I guarantee you that because seeing how it's going, I mm -hmm. see that they're not in control. They're not in control. Even the, the, the 40%, the request to the father, but they didn't say, okay, we setting up something, company who run the airport, we're gonna give you 40%. It was demanded. That's why they know they said, no, no, they're not going to accept, because that's something they negotiated. So it's unsealed and delivered. Yeah. Yeah. In case you've just joined us, I'm Oral Lips. Oral Lips Live here on Hot 99.9 .9 FM radio, Facebook, and YouTube. My guest on the program is uh, leader of the whole party, territorial council member with two seats in the territorial council, Francis and Martin. Mr. Chauvel, you know, it's, it's quite amazing. I appreciate you coming in and, and explaining this because I think the people of Friends and Martin need to know. They need to know. They need to know people of the island in general, not only the French side, because uh, this concerns the entire island. Just like Juliana, anything happening in Juliana yeah. or, or, or Winier, something happened to Winier, it, it concerns us too. Uh, you mentioned that you went to Grand Cars to fly to Martinique or wherever. So. That's how it is. We, we, something happen on, happens on one side uh, that is affecting the economy, it's affecting the entire island. So that's how I see it. So it's good that everybody knows that, uh, yes, a St. Martin Island uh, Airways, airline, sorry, yes, but not that way. <laughs> and let it be a real St. Martin airline. That's why last week, Thursday, the first thing, we had a, a council meeting with eight points last week, Thursday. And one of the points, point number three, was let us vote for the idea of the creation of a type of company like that, a SEM, in the aviation business. Boom. Nothing else. And that's it. I said, yes. I vote for it. But I said, for what I know that you want to do the way you want to do it, no. But we'll see that next week, which was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And of course, yesterday was a meeting with just that point. But I knew already what they were coming with. And I, I, I went yesterday to explain, guys, <laughs> not this. Yes, the idea last week, let's do something else. If you come to, there was a time we had something on a French side, a small airline called Air St. Martin, doing Guadeloupe, uh, uh, St. Martin, Guadeloupe, Martinique, St. Martin, St. Bats. Let's see in St. Martin, uh, St. Thomas. There's nothing between St. Thomas and here right now. St. Martin, San Juan, Santo Domingo, why not? In the future. But we, can, we start small. Mm. Yes. Yes, because you know, you know exactly the race. You start from small, it's based here, you know exactly. And then the race is not, you're not taking people that are going to strike on you from day one. You know that those 120 Employees that you are taking up are strikers. 
they strike, they, they brought down this airline in, 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 in weeks. And you, you said 80, now it's 120, and you feel that you're going to think, oh, they said, oh, we're going to negotiate them with them at higher salaries. You ain't start yet, you're going to negotiate higher salaries. With all the expense that you see that you're going to have, you think about negotiating higher salaries, and you won't begin yet. I, 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 look, I, <laughs> so this, where's the logic behind all this that? This sounds like a dream. I, I can't imagine this. Right. A nightmare, even. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Um, so what else happening on Prince and Martin that you think we should know about? Well, uh, something else that uh, is happening, uh, they have this administration has brought in uh, a company from Guadeloupe that was set up for Guadeloupe. Uh, it's a company that's set up for the communes of Guadeloupe. Mm -hmm. It's as if uh, the southern side, yeah. the, the government on the southern side would bring in a company from Curacao that was set up to do business in Curacao for the Curacao people, for the districts of Curacao. But yet, you want to bring them here because they got a certain amount of money and you need to, uh, on the French side, I think on this side too, uh, it exists. The preemption for land, uh, or well want to sell uh, Mr. X mm. a piece of land, the notary has to notify government, local government, local government has the right to say, sorry, you can't sell it all because we have this project for this piece of land. So we object, but they have to buy it from you. They don't have to buy it. I can't say they don't have to buy it. They can propose a lower price. Propose. But you don't have to sell value, it to them. Right? Yeah, but you don't have to sell it to them if the price is not your right. price. You can negotiate, then they come up to your price. But they have that rights. So they're saying, this government, local government, we don't always have the money. We have two months. When that happens, the notary not notifies us. We have two months to react. Sometimes uh, it's a beautiful opportunity, but we don't have the money. So we're going to bring this company from Guadeloupe. That is not set up to work here. But in order for them to work here, we got to modify our urbanism code. we got to modify our tax code. Uh, we're going to charge the local people, uh, local population, 20 euro per inhabitant so that we can finance, give our contribution to this company. I mean, a bunch of stuff just to bring this company here that is not supposed to operate here. They can't really want to hear it. <laughs> and then, and then uh, we have just evolved to Article 74. We have a new status, mm -hmm. autonomy. This thing was create for the, created for the commune of Guadeloupe, and you bring them here. And you're going through all the modification, and you're going to tax your people to, for them, for you to finance that company. I mean, it's unbelievable. That has happened. They voted it already, so it has happened. Well, you want me to go ahead with that? I can't. It's a step backward, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, the same way we created a SEM for this airline. We can create a SEM to do just that. Exactly. All this company does is buy land and hold. They have rights to hold the land for up to five years for the government, right? But they can buy for themselves. So how they make money? They buy land, they sell. They, they set in the document. We also make loans so right. that they don't really have money like how they think, millions like that. Yes, they're making money. But we can do the same by creating our own company. The excuse is that, well, we need the money now. We can always create ours after, but we need, and they have done that. I can't go for that. Oh, I, I'm, I'm really, 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 really <laughs> surprised. I can't believe what I'm yeah, hearing. Yeah, know? yeah, oh. we, we are going backward. And uh, the deception with me mm -hmm. is that I expected it from other governments, not this one, because this is the leader that defended Article 74, our autonomy that is uh, trying his best, was, I don't know if it still is, to our fire department today. If you dial the number with us uh, for ambulance or fire, for fire engine, uh, it's Guadeloupe that answers, and they are managing our, and that is since 2007, uh, since we are in this new status, it should be us, but because of money again, at that time, it was advised to the collectivity mm -hmm. to sign a convention with them so they can advan advance the money and we pay them after, so let them stay in control. Now, today, this president went in campaign and say, we have to take that back, we have to be, and I agree. But while you're doing that and you realize that, you understand mm -hmm. why it happened to us, you bring in this company, 
that was made created for Guadeloupe yeah. here to manage our land. Uh, unbelievable. And and they <laughs> they would have the rights to if the government camp in them, they could say, okay, well, we sell it. Because they get a they get a deed. They get it while they hold the land, they have the deed. <laughs> so you explain me the logic behind the whole thing. Well, Mr. Um, Chauvel, always a pleasure having you in this program. Thank um, you. Always a pleasure to be here. It kind of saddened me <laughs> when I hear the things I heard. Well, now you understand why I say that uh, I'm beginning to be disappointed, mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to wonder, well, these are not the people that I knew because we fought together for the people. I, I'm still supporting them. But it has to be good. When they do things like this, I can't follow them. Well, um, we have the time. 30 seconds in closing. Well, I just want to thank you. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, whenever you ask me to be here, I'll be here. Uh, it's always good to give the information such as I have given there uh, for the past hour. And um, looking forward to be back here in the future. Always a thank pleasure you. having you, and thank you for coming, Mr. Charbel, leader of the whole party and member of the Territorial Council of St. Martin. We'll see you next time on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. Take care. Bye.